news of the fighting in and around the Rundstedt salient was still rather scarce when this captured film of the German push reached Britain. Since then, the situation has not been officially clarified, apart from the welcome news that the enemy has been held in the north and west and a corridor driven into the salient from the south. The latest film to arrive includes this scene near Bastogne. American military police checking the identity of civilians on their way back from the battle zone. A big part in stopping the enemy drive was being played by American troops in this sector and they were obviously taking no chances. Germans disguised as Belgian civilians might try to get past and even GIs were checked for the Hun was known to have put quite a number of his troops into American uniform. At Malmedy, on the northern shoulder of the salient, a mass evacuation of civilians was taking place under American supervision. They were given rations and transport and most of them were taken away to Spa where billeting was handled by Belgians. Certainly a bitter moment for all these refugees would no doubt thought they'd seen the last of the Bosch. Malmedy, captured and retaken during this new Battle of the Bulge, had suffered terrible destruction. To judge by the pictures, large areas of this small town acquired by Belgium from Germany after the last war had been completely blotted out. At this time, the place was deserted, except for a few civilians who still remained among the ruins and a few Americans dealing with the fires. <music> Meanwhile, men of General Patton's 3rd Army, counter-attacking in the south, had driven a wedge into the salient and were in the process of widening the Bastogne Corridor. Throughout the earlier stages of the battle, Americans had held on firmly at Bastogne, They'd been supplied by air thanks to the work of big fleets of C 47s. Though no fighters appear in the picture, presumably the transport planes were strongly protected against the Luftwaffe, which seems to have reserved its strength for attacks on our airfields. Anyway, the C 47s continued to get through with supplies, and Bastogne was held. The Battle of Bastogne and the opening of the corridor may prove to have been the principal factors in wiping out Rundstedt's initially successful drive. And now, while Patton cuts his way deeper into the salient from the south, Hodge's first army attacks from the north. Though still too early to anticipate their link-up or the bisecting of the salient, such may well be the Allied answer to Rundstedt. Americans who did a great job in helping to stop the Germans' drive northwards are seen after rejoining their comrades. They're part of a group of 400 men commanded by Colonel Hogan and known as Task Force Hogan. They set up a roadblock which they held for six days and nights against part of a crack SS Panzer Division. When all hope of reinforcement was abandoned, they discarded their equipment, blackened their faces and marched back 14 miles through the enemy lines. <laughs> At the beginning of Rundstedt's push, thick fog blanketed the battleground and for some days very little help could be given from the air. But the moment the weather cleared, RAF Mitchells and Bostons of the 2nd Tactical Air Force were very much on the spot. In this RAF film, we see a few of them at work. Targets included enemy supply concentrations at Schmidt time and an important road junction at Recht, which was only some 2,000 yards from Allied troop positions. yards at München Gladbach, a key point of supplies for German troops taking part in the offensive, were also bombed, this time by Bomber Command's heavies. In addition to counter-attack on the ground and in cooperation with it, RAF and American airmen continue to hit the Hun very hard indeed. 